What's up, everyone? What it do? We are Mugs and Pockets here with your friendly neighborhood music watch. <laughs> here to nice. remind you, you get exactly what you accept. Uh. And that's a thing we came up with. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Last one around. Actually, that you get exactly what you accept. I've been using that as my personal motto for many, many years. Yeah. Kind of to make some decisions along the that's way. It's a good one to adopt. I like yeah. that. Anyway, we're here to talk about live shows today. And uh, uh, the good thing about this guy is that we're not only just doing it from like the point of view of um, artists or point of view of um, fans, audience members, because we are both obviously, but um, he has the experience of being on the promoter side of things, yeah. putting shows together, bringing different artists in and um, what he thinks about when he chooses artists, who he wants to, mm. you know, deal with. <laughs> mm. And so uh, I just wanted to say this is sort of from the uh, your local music venue point of view. So we're not necessarily talking about the selling out stadiums sort of a thing. Right. So yeah, we're talking about what makes a great live show. Um, and I just kind of wanted to take a second to think about if in this day and age we all think about the live show in a similar manner because there's tons of covid um you know yeah. teenagers that during covid kind of uh, you know turned 21 maybe and they haven't had or 18 and um haven't had as much live show experience as some of us do because we remember actually like really that being a big deal, seeking that out and getting a certain energy, a certain performance, yeah. like life changing shit, like out of, Ugh. out of, um, these performers that we went to see in these shows. And, um, right now, not necessarily all the shows are set up to actually make that sort of heart to heart impact, Yeah, you know? Um, and so I just, Kind of want to, everybody, you know, everybody to think about like what, what is the appeal of a live show? Like, why do you go to a live show? Do you still go to a live show? <laughs> Are there live shows that you want to see in in your local music scene? You know, or are they yeah. just kind of? Do you wait for the biggest name to come to your city and then you're like, oh, okay, Beyonce's here, I'll go. Mm. Nas is here, I'll go. Mm. Or like in between, it's just kind of like. You know, uh, watching the music you like on TV or whatever. So, I'm gonna um, hand it over to him. Once I say, we're kind of gonna take it from the point of view of like, that thing we do is like, is everybody doing their job? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're talking about that a yeah. lot. Like, is everybody doing their job? Definitely. And so, the first job we're gonna talk about is, yeah, let's go with the promoter. Because okay. obviously the goal is like to make money, yeah. but what else? Like um, the artist cares about exposure for them. Um, mm. The venue owners and the promoters care about the most people sort of, you know, coming in and uh, making making money and making sure everybody gets paid, which, you, you know, that's, yeah. there's cases obviously with bad promoters where people don't get paid and there's a mm. whole lot of thing. So, but like, do promoters also think about creating um, the culture in their city to make sure that the audience keeps coming back? Right. Because even here in Seattle, there's been some shows here in Seattle where the promoters were from out of town, so they don't really care what's going to happen here yeah. once they get paid for that show. It's definitely a different business, like... It seems as if it's a different business everywhere you go. However, there are like some key elements that I like to focus on, you know, just as being a promoter. Um, so as far as being that promoter, one of the first and foremost, like you got to know your city. You know what I'm saying? Like the city that you in, the people, you know, saying that's there, uh, the venues that's there, what the cap sizes are in those venues. Like, for instance, let's start there, right? Uh, capacity levels at spots is if you're being a promoter and you, let's say you got to that point where like you know a lot of your town you know a lot of the performers you know a lot of 
what people are capable of and what attention span, you know what I'm saying, that they can uh, offer, if you will, mm -hmm. like once they start doing their thing, you know? Um, so one of the things I like to pay attention to is like different cap um, capacities. So I'll locally, which if you focus on local shows, mostly what I'll see is I'll see like the 400 capacity room, the 500 capacity room, right? Which means that you're not really making too much money, you know what I'm saying? But it's good enough for like the local act, especially if they play in 30 minutes, an hour, you know what I'm saying? And they can get hell, you know what I'm saying? 2,500, let's, you know what I'm saying? Let's say they pack it in, pack it in nice, you know what I'm saying? Where it's, it's like nice, you know, packed room. Um, but then, you know what I'm saying? From there, let's say, uh, one of the, I'll, I'll run through like kind of what I, what I do, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know the people, I know the promoters, other promoters there. Sometimes they have house promoters that are there. You don't want to clash with them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get to know, first and foremost, get to know what sound man or woman is doing that show. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you booking a date, you know what I'm saying? You got your performers and stuff. Get to know that sound man or woman, even prior to get to know all of them, right? Uh, once you get that, like, you know, our house manager, you know what I'm saying? Who's who's managing the floor? Um, uh, if there's a stage manager or something like that, you know, get to know those folks, the staff, and definitely don't leave out the bartenders. You know what I'm saying? Um, mainly because they see everything, mm -hmm. right? And usually they can tell you, like, if a promoter or uh, um, the manager or something like that wants to book them again or book that uh you know that person again um so if you're in there and let's say you plan on doing more shows you know what I'm saying at this venue that you really like because it's got a nice capacity room let's say they they don't give you too much of a of a hassle when it comes to uh payment you know what I'm saying some people are really different when it comes to that you know if they know who you are they might just be like hey I, I'm looking for um, just $300, you know what I'm saying, down. Like, get, get me that, you know what I'm saying, day of show. And uh, and then you go ahead and do your thing, right? You know, uh, other people, they have to rent it because they don't know who that promoter is. Mm -hmm. They may not have that mm -hmm. trust built like that, you know what I'm saying? Right. They don't know. Yeah, trust is a, trust and character is a lot of, a lot of, like, a lot of it. Yeah, like, oh, it, yeah. it kind of makes oh, yeah. the road easier, just, you know. Just like you said, if somebody doesn't know you or trust you or you didn't take the initiative to go and say, you know, this is who I am, this is what yeah. I do, whatever, and then they kind of see who who else is in your network, who else has worked with you, you know, yeah. you'll get a much better, much better deal. Yeah. And then that first show, that first show that you, you do has to be flawless. Yeah. And in my eyes, it has to be flawless because that's how you get your repeat service. You know, and it's like it's funny because a lot of stuff that you're saying, I think of the same thing from the artist's point of view. Yeah. So like when you're, we're actually going to talk about kind of like the type of audience you bring in and, and the, mm. the whole bartenders thing and mm. later. Like I have, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have a yeah. whole there's list. A, there's, a, there's a lot. But there's a like, lot to it. For me, it's like I've always seen that same thing from the artist's point of view. So one of the last uh, shows we did, even like the the door person was like. I really enjoyed this show and this vibe. I'm going to make sure to Boom. talk to the manager or whatever to, to bring you guys back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I was, I was seeing that from the point of view of the artist, like make sure you're doing a good job, right. but obviously it's also like, but I don't really see the, pro the promoter being that involved and doing that. Right. I always think that's my job that's, because I don't even know who the promoter is. You got, you got the differences of the good and the bad, you know what I'm saying? The good, the good promoters and the bad promoters. Yeah. When I do a show, like I don't, I don't usually know yeah. who's the promoter. The consistency of a of a good promoter in my and this these are in my eyes, you know what I'm saying? Um consistency of a good promoter is that he or she is going to pay attention to or they, you know, is going to pay attention to um what it is that their audience is doing, what it is that their their artists that they booked are doing and then like what's happening like everywhere. Like they're the, they're the yeah. people that walk you know what I'm saying? They walk them circles. You know what so I'm saying? So what's going on when like there's a show, you're on the bill, mm -hmm. and like you have no idea who the promoter is. Right. Because I mean they're not on the the flyer. Right. You don't So what the promoter should have that I would suggest is uh like they have their their support, basically. 
right? That has the information on hand. Like, so right when, let's say, let's say a uh, sound check is at six o'clock, right? And let's say you got two hours before doors, um, and uh, but lo but load in is five o'clock, right? So load in, you got an hour to load in, boom, do your thing. Sound check, six o'clock, bam. Now at load in is where the when the promoter should actually be there. Wow, I don't know if I've ever seen that. <laughs> <laughs> See that this is like load in is when the he's promoter covering should actually everything be there. that I've like put down under yeah. like the job of talent nah. or the sound person of the whatever. Nah, because if you manager. don't, if somebody don't show up due to whatever. The promoter has to be able to know, like, okay, man, let me make these calls so I can get my show yeah, you know promoters. What I'm saying, on the road. Yeah, yeah, I haven't been. <laughs> See, now I'm gonna go off the DJs. I'm, I'm, I'm going saying. to the promoters. Like, I didn't even know where y'all were because, like, I'm saying, like, sometimes it's a promoter from like we're doing a show here. The yeah. promoter is from California that like plugged some name in based yeah. on who they think is in the scene. Yeah. So they're not gonna come from California right. for the loading and that's why you have to have your help but your help has to then play the role that you should be playing you know okay. so they are the ones that get in contact with you they are the ones you know what i like to do is like week to week if we're doing like an actual ticketed sale type of thing week to week i kind of get in touch with my uh pr um my people that are booked and i'll say hey where are you at on on ticket sales now the promoter can't do all the ticket sales. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Obviously, the promoter is going to promote, you know what I'm saying, as well as sell. But um, th the biggest draw should be the actual people that he books. So that's where the artist, this is where I kind of put that on the artist, where it's like, hey, bring your fans. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that the thing that I'm promoting can actually bring more people. So hopefully five people together can bring in like at least 100 people. At least 150 okay. people. So let's do this mm -hmm. for the promoter. The two things like I want to know the most and then y'all okay. feel free to like say something else you might want to know. But one, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one is like as a promoter, how do you approach picking the lineup for the show? Okay. Boom. You know, who do you look for? Yep. Um, And then two is the kind of the ticket situation because like, I know you mm -hmm. like to have physical tickets and like just go and do the, exactly. the, the streets. <laughs> exactly. And exactly. I don't really see anybody else doing that except for just like firing off a bunch of posts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So one, um, talk about artists that you would pick. Okay. So we'll talk about artists. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would pick four. Or the lineup. Yeah. First, first of all, my lineup, I would pick four different people. Um, Let's say if I'm doing a hip hop show, I'm I'm picking four different artists, um, and throughout that I'm trying to find some eclectic you know folks as well that can actually add some authenticity to my actual lineup. So it's not going to be the same sounding type people, but they're not going to be too different or spread out. And if they are, that'll probably be the headliner. You know what I mean? Um, so the headliner first and foremost probably gets the first. Uh, the first pick, because that's the reason why we're going to be throwing the show. Right. Now, let's just go ahead and, and start with an actual local headliner that like brings in a lot of different people, right? So we bring in so-and-so, right? X, whoever that is. Um, and let's say that they're good for at least 200 people that we've seen. We've paid attention to what they do. Boom, we're like, all right, 200. And let's say capacity is at actually 500, right? Okay. So, so we're going to expect our artists, our mainstream artists, you know what I'm saying, or lo lo local superstar to get in touch with his two, at least 200 folks. You know what I'm saying? If that's where his cap or her cap, whatever uh, their cap is, that's what we're going to kind of depend on, right? And we're going to promote um, that aspect that we think draws the people. You know what I'm saying? So if they got a single that is like kind of like sing songy, you know what I'm saying? They do some acoustic, but then they rap as well. I'm gonna probably pick one act that actually does does, a similar does this, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But doesn't do like maybe not does both, but they, they do a lot of this. Okay. And they got some dope beats. You know okay. what I'm saying? Now let's say that act is actually good, interesting to watch. This is what you gotta know too. Interesting to watch. 
Um, and that'll be my first person that I put on. But let's say they only get like 20 people. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, so I'm going to give that support, if you will. Right. That'll be the second act. And what's your reasoning for, for picking somebody similar to the main act? Okay. Similar to the main act is because I don't want to strand like, uh, uh, people who are waiting for that type of element, people that come for that element that like that. You know what I'm saying? In the crowd. And they're just like, oh man, like I love acoustic, you know what I'm saying? Music and hip hop. You know what I mean? Like, let's say they love that blend, right? So that's the reason that I'm picking that is so that my, my audience doesn't feel like they just came to like this hip hop show that has nothing to do with acoustics until like the actual end. You know what I'm saying? So they're not bored while they're exactly. waiting for the main act. Exactly. Or exactly. just show up for the main act. Exactly. Exactly. Because that provides, creates Boom. a vibe throughout the whole thing, right? Exactly. So yes. it's like, I personally don't really like when people are like, oh, what time are you guys going on? I'll be just like, the show starts at this time. Because mm -hmm. you want everybody that there is supported and you want the audience to start like growing and mingling and, exactly. and whatever to just have a vibe throughout the whole night. And so what I'll do is I'll probably pick a DJ that, that is pretty eclectic, that knows like a mix of different things, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then can give a vibe. And then based off of either ticket sales um, or like the actual headliner, right? And the material that, that they have. Let's say they got a good solid hour, right? I'm probably going to give um, my, my opening acts only 30 minutes, you know what okay. I'm saying? Um, so that like we can bang, you know what I'm saying? Get in, get out and then get to our Is the headline. DJ one of the four acts? The DJ is actually or just in between. Like it is, is one of the four acts, but that's okay. mainly in the beginning while people are coming okay. in. Right. So um, then three other acts. So you got the DJ, you got the person that is doing a similar thing. So if it's mm -hmm. maybe guitar and guitar, and then you have two more. Yeah. So five total. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So DJ goes on, boom, 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 boom. Um, then the acoustic act goes on, right? Bam. Yeah. Doing their thing with dope beats. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to give you that second one is probably going to be better than the, than the headliner. headliner. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> that's the underdog. That's, that's the, where it mugs the pockets that's the, perform. You know what I'm saying? Right after that's, the acoustic act. Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> you want to keep your crowd hype. Your, your crowd is they just getting into it. So like, yeah. they're probably not going to jump in. Right, right at the beginning, they're getting their drinks, they're getting whatever, they're mingling, you know, and that second act is going to be like, all yeah. right, we in the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is it. So this is what I feel is going to grab not only your audience, but it's going to grab uh, the attention of the the, the uh, people who are selling the alcohol or the drinks. You know what I'm saying? They're going to notice like people are starting to like really do what people in the club do, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Mingle, have fun, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, we in it, and we started. Like, we started pretty quick, right? you know? Um, then, uh, let's say their numbers, right, is around like 100, something like this, you know what I'm saying? Like, anywhere from 70 to 100, right? Um, and uh, and then, like, the, so the one before, the one before the headliner, is probably going to be on a similar level, but if it is, peek this, if it is like a single person um, that I pick or like a, a male act, I'm trying to look for the female act. You know what I'm saying? That goes on right before the headliner. If they're single, you know what I'm saying? Um, or I'm trying to do like a duo that does exactly what that person did, but like does it like, mm, you know what I'm saying? They give you, they give you damn near everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, because I don't want, here's what I want to do. I want to put pressure on my headliner mm. to give you a dope show. I'm, I'm, there's no easy way out. If you're the headliner and you are my bill, oh, you getting that pressure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so whoever's like the top in our, our town, that's who I'm putting on right before you. And they probably got more, they probably got more, you know what I'm saying? Uh, pizzazz more. They probably got more hits. But you got the popularity. So I'm going to make you work for your popularity. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I'll throw a show. And then what the artists, what the artists love about this is that they, they know, they get to know me as a promoter. And they'll say, yo, he always got them bills. 
like that that I feel like I can get, you know what I'm saying, I can get some extra fans. Yeah. I can get, you know what I'm saying, like uh, an actual shout out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He's always in the paper. But you see that there's like a whole strategy oh here. Because yeah. like most shows and new artists out there and, and fans know, you go to the show and it's like the first two or three acts is just going to be like, we just know these people or these right. are our friends. Right, right, Let's right. put them on. Right. And then, you know, by the time the headliner comes on, people are bored out of their mind. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing that this, why I want to talk from like the local venue point of view, yeah. it's just like, it's a living, oh, living yeah. organism. And so what happens when you as a fan go to the show and you're bored out of your mind until that favorite yeah. popular yeah. artist comes on? Yep. Yeah. Are you then going to go to another show? Probably that affects not. everybody in the scene. Yeah. Because then nobody will come to our show if they don't know our name, mm. unless we're opening up for, right. you know, popular right. name. And, and yeah. just to add to that, right, like the actual promoters or, or house managers and things like this, they look for that stuff. So they do have like the separate local nights and then mm -hmm. they have their mainstream nights. Right, right. Right. So if they decide, hey, if I'm going to keep my lights on for this, these local acts, you have to bring me at least 300 people in here. Not just not just pay me what I what I want, you know what I'm saying, for the lights. No, you got to bring yeah. me at least 300 people in here. You know what I'm saying? Um because we this is a brand as well. So they want to keep the brand, you know, happening. So if it gets known like that you're a, a big venue or whatever, but there's always like a low count as far as the people are concerned people are gonna be like mm, I'm, I'm good they cool they got the good drinks but yeah, yeah the yeah, people yeah, kind of yeah, stiff yeah. and you know yeah. shows be iffy right so like that that whole vibe i talked about like that we kind of remember from live shows mm -hmm. it's not necessarily their consistency right co consistently yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That remind me and so like why would you go if you had a meh time it's right. like it's time out of your day. It's, yeah. you know, maybe you work in the morning. Maybe, you know, you're saving money, whatever. Mm. It's like if there is nothing that is better about the live show than it is watching, you know, uh, music videos on TV. It's like, why would you go? And that's right. kind of like what I'm thinking is like, as a performer, we know these, you know, we'll talk about what the job of the talent is. But one of them is like really that connection, like, do you have that connection heart to heart? Like you mm. might have the technique, you might be able to do vocal gymnastics or rap really hard, but if you don't have that ability to connect with the audience, right, right, then yeah. they're not gonna come back because they yeah. can watch it on TV. Exactly. But, okay, segue to yeah. the second part of the promoter. Okay. Um, the ticket sales. Ticket sales. Boom. How much do you kind of? Um, not put pressure on, but like, mm. how clear do you make it to the acts? Like, it's your job to sell tickets. Okay. Because again, we've been um, we've been doing shows. Again, this whole pulling teeth. It's like we are promoting. We tag the acts that are in the show with us. Barely ever repost. Mm. They're like, this is your show. Mm. You're supposed to be promoting. It. It's better for everybody if people show up. Why? Yeah. Do you not take the two seconds to, like, I already did the post. I already did the work. Yeah. You literally just have to repost something that you're tagged in. Yeah. And it's like, almost yeah. no one does it. Like, drives me crazy. Mm. Like, it's your job. And then there's, then there's <laughs> sometimes, your job. yo, then there's sometimes when people don't want to put you or whatever you do on their page. Right. So that's, again, on that promoter side, you got to know, like, who's clicking with who? You know exactly. what I'm saying? Who really makes it happen and who's glad to like not only educate their fan base, you know what I'm saying, to another but create but, networks. Right. Create who's, with who's other interested musicians. in it. Right. Who's interested in linking up, making this like eighty eight again, you know what I'm saying? Like and going who wants in. to promote because then it promotes the whole music scene yeah. as opposed to all the people's like, yeah. No, just look at me. I'm keeping my fans to myself. Yeah. And then it's like mm. Not as many people, like, people can tell when there's, like, no camaraderie, when there's right. no... Of course. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's very, like... Yeah. Strategic, surgical. Tickets. Tickets. All right. So, <laughs> in, in in the same scenario, basically what I'm I'm doing is uh, I, first, I first have a conversation with all my 
my my people. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's just on phone, it doesn't necessarily need to be a Zoom call or anything like this. These this is all from my perspective. Um, so um, yeah, so I'll 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 hit up my uh, first act, and I'll be like, yo, thank you, you know what I'm saying, for coming on. This is great. This is amazing. Thank you so much. I'm gonna get you some tickets uh, to get in touch with your fans. I'm gonna start everybody off with 25 tickets, right? Boom, so that means everybody, you know? Um, now, if you, I'm gonna also ask you if you think that you can sell more and f first of all, keep, keep in line, you know what I'm saying, what it is that you have. Don't lose the tickets, you know what I mean? Uh, we're keep, talking physical tickets. Yeah, oh, we're talking physical tickets. Yeah, keep in mind what you have because for me personally, what I found found, and this is not even just you know um, post COVID. This is pre COVID. You know what I mean? Uh, what I found is if if it's too easy for people to say that they did something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not doing it. Yeah. Like if I give you physical tickets and it's ten, once you come back, even if you didn't do nothing, once you come back to me, you and I know. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna look each other in the eye. You're gonna first of all, you as an artist, you're gonna be like, "Yo, my bad, I couldn't do." And you already know whatever excuse you have, mm -hmm. it's not working. Yeah. Because I gave you ten tickets, you had about two months to sell ten tickets, and you didn't sell one. Yeah. Not even to your mama. Not even to your brother. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm. And it, what's and up? And also, it's like, Why should I, I, book you again? I know people are going to kind of turn up their noses. It's like, well, I only get, you know, whatever but on, you on, the... online. But, Yo. but, you know, Ooh. right. Yeah. You know, somebody's going to say, I'll buy the ticket at the door. Mm. They're going to, you know, cozy up for the winter. They're right. not showing up. If they already bought the tickets, at least you already have the money. Right. So way right. better for the artist and for, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. for the promoter. Yeah. You know? the, the incentive behind it usually is that like you you get like an actual um, a fee t that's taken off. You know what I'm saying? Like if you get it early, that's that's usually the incentive. Also, the incentive behind it is that I know what my artist is worth. Mm -hmm. We talk we talk about likes and all this, so people who turn up their noses. I actually I want you to because when we talk about these likes and you like I did this, I did this on streams, and I did. Mm -hmm. Can you sell them tickets? Can you turn this into actual loot? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, if I give you 10 tickets and you still got 10 tickets, that means you didn't promote enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No matter if you promote it at all, you know what I mean? Yeah. You didn't promote enough. Because there's not a chance that you're going to tell everybody you know is like, oh, I'm playing this show. And be like, right. oh, I want to come. Oh, I got tickets. Right. It's right there. Exactly. As opposed to them maybe getting to the website and right. maybe... You know, right. it's a very in the moment thing. So, so, and then, so, okay. So now that everybody's got 25 tickets, um, again, I asked them, um, <clears throat> I asked them what it is that you feel like you can sell. Uh, and do you want more now? Or do you just want to sell out of those first ones? And then I give you 25 more. So that's kind of, you know, the way that I can keep my process on on what it is that I've given out ticket wise, right? So let's say I'm only allotted 250 tickets to a 500 capacity room and then they leave everything else up to- For the door? Right, for the door, you know what I mean? Okay. Um, or maybe they, maybe they do like a little bit more like 400, you know what I'm saying, okay. depending, right? Um, so yeah, so that's the way like I kind of keep my balance, if you will. Uh, now, usually here's what happens is Ticket wise, once I once I give every everybody except twenty five, right? Because they know that's like that's like that's basically like the buy in, and so everybody except twenty five. It is usually the person or group that is right before the headliner. That's like, hey yo, dog, give me a hundred. This is how you know, you know what I'm saying? These folks is like, yo, they're not playing. Yeah, they're not playing, and you already know, like as a headliner. Oh, that person's the next. Because yeah. if they get the dope show, they didn't they didn't <laughs> show out yeah. all their tickets, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, right? Um, and then like this other person just coasting. I'm like, I'm and I'm telling that person, and then everybody knows. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody knows what's happening. They know that they got the tickets. They know that this right. person right before him was like, yo, I'll take that, take that honey. But then you also see like, if he's doing his job as a promoter, yeah. how much incentive there is for people to promote and to do a good job at the show to get booked again. Right. Because that show worked. Right. If that show didn't work, if he didn't do his job mm -hmm. and then nobody else did their job, yeah. it affects everything. Like I said, yeah. the show is crap. <laughs> yeah. Nobody oh, yeah. showed up. Bartenders yeah. didn't make any money. Those, like, it just, the energy drops. Yeah. Like, a lot of what we're dealing right now is people, mm. like, the way we're approaching things, like, yeah. really being serious about whatever job we have at the moment, yeah. people light up. People are just, like, excited. Yeah. They want to record. They want to make beats. They want... Yeah. Because it's like, you have to take this work seriously. I think we're... We are in a, we're in a place like, okay, these minimum wage jobs pay shit and, and things mm. don't make sense in the world and people are mad and then... It's like, well, I'm not doing that because, yeah, you know, I ain't getting paid enough for that. Right. Okay. That's great. That's got nothing to do with this <laughs> artist's life. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't, we don't have that luxury. Yeah. You know. And some people still try to do it. You know some what I'm saying? People do it. And people do it all the time. And it's just, it's, 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 it's like it's your show, it's your performance, and you don't promote right. for people to come and see you. Right. Like you think you're like that good that you can just go there and do your thing and everybody is grateful like oh my right. god they showed up and did their mediocre shit <laughs> I'm sorry. Anything no, it's out the there. It's out there. It is out there. Yes, more so on the tickets, right? <laughs> um when usually when you get the tickets back, you know what I mean? Um like from the artists especially if you get 25 tickets from the headliner that usually brings in 25 yeah, it's probably trying time to look at a, a different headline. Right. You know what I mean? And sometimes in your city, there's there's multiple people that are like making music, make doing all of this like exciting new stuff, but they have no show, or like they're really lazy about doing promo. You know what I mean? Well, going back to the promoter for a second, this is to me, to me, right? This is where it comes to like, okay, promoter, time to actually uh, use a little bit more of that knowledge that you have as another hat to create more incentive. So now, this is what I usually do. I will actually change up the vibe of a whole show. So here's one of the things that I did. Y'all can take this and run with it. You know what I mean? I, I created something for a show. This, this started to happen in the town I was in. And for a show, I created the incentive for a lot of the artists and other artists that may not have been, you know, coming out, you know what I mean, to, to like do their thing. Um, I called something that was called, I called the show Get Money, oh. right? Now. I like it. Oh, yo, this is, this is, <laughs> I thought it was amazing, you know what I mean? I called it Get Money, right? The way I promoted it, um was by way of just showcasing, like, I think it was $7 that I showcased, right? Yeah, because who, you know, who who likes $7 as opposed to 700 you know what I mean? That you can, you know what I mean? But anyway, um, I promoted it like that. But then I said, okay, I gave them all of the information, I gave the artists, all, I gave them the tickets, and I gave them all of the information that they needed um, that we go by, us promoters. I gave them the capacity of the room, right? And then I said, if you bring in anywhere from, um, let's say, 10 people to uh, 20 people, and there's and there's a cap as far as um, you know money, you have to exceed a certain amount of people in order to start making money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just lost everything. You know what I mean? So... And this was per artist. So I bring in, I think I said, you bring in 50 people, like you get this amount of money. You bring in 75, like, so I basically was showing them like the brackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And like, I was like, yo, if you get the, like a full capacity room, and now this, yo, this was something, this was something that they could have gotten together and did this so that each oh, one sure. of them could make a good amount of money. Sure. You know what I'm saying? This show ended up, yo, it was the most packed. <laughs> it was the most packed show I've ever done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like with locals. 
and there was yeah. I, there was one of one of the cats came in, and this man sold. There was a three hundred twenty five capacity room. This man sold seventy tickets, and he got his money. He got it. I was like, yo, boom. And I did it in front of everybody, just so, you know what I'm saying? It was a little yeah. flex, you know what I mean? Like, hey, yo, you know what I'm saying? My man yeah. sold 70 tickets, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Give it up. Everybody was like, yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, bam, you know what I'm saying? Hand him his guap, you know, right there. And he was like, hey, yo, thanks, fam. He was like, I couldn't have done He made it a bigger <laughs> thing than speech. it was. This is why you love artists, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you encourage them, you know what I mean? Because, but, yeah, it needs that yeah. element of fun, of yeah, exactly. showmanship, of, yeah. like, camaraderie yeah. it's like i don't see that yeah at all you know that, unless I mean, it it's like that you brought in it's like oh i'm performing can my can my homie do the opening right. slot it's like okay they know each other okay right. cool but they're not necessarily good yeah anyway we gotta wrap this up we have so many yeah, <laughs> other yeah, yeah. things to do a word of advice for maybe young budding promoters in the scene mm. who maybe don't know a lot of this stuff. They just kind of think like, uh, I don't know, I look for talent maybe and just like slap a, play, a list together of people. Like even seeing, you know, the scene here or, yeah. or whatever, just like, what's your advice to the promoters? Word of advice for the promoters is uh, get to know your artists, encourage them um, and go out to go out to the shows, go out to multiple shows. And find out who's who. Basically, be a talent scout for your town. You know what I'm saying? And get involved. And, like, have them know exactly who it is that you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, also, on the flip, like, do that for the venues. Go to the vi go to the venue. Say what's up to all the people. Get to know all those folks. You know what I'm saying? Consistently. Not I'm not talking about just one time. You know what I'm saying? Like, do it consistently. And become uh, not only a fan, but a friend. You know what I'm saying? To those folks. Yeah. Be present, be active, yeah. take your job seriously. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> take yeah. your job seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're moving on to talent. Okay, yeah. Um, whew, obviously, mm. <laughs> there's a lot to say. I will start with, as a, as a, as a, the talent, as the artist, like, respect the stage. Mm. Like, once you are on stage and you are performing, it doesn't have to be a physical stage. You could be just in a group of people and all of a sudden somebody's like, my friend does this, and now you have the spotlight, like yeah. figurative spotlight. Mm. It becomes a stage. And and this is why you have to practice in a way. Like sometimes I practice in a way, like these very like complicated car wraps and things. I will practice them while I'm doing other things. Yeah. Because like I could be doing dishes and doing that. Because on stage, if as I'm doing that, the microphone stand is falling. Can mm. I catch it mm. and then keep rapping? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for or real. like even for like real. the last show, I was like, people were like, I can't believe she's holding the basket and like doing this, you know, yeah. petting the wolf while she's doing still in character. You have to yeah. because it's like we have this idea that when we're performing, all of a sudden we're not nervous and we're not affected by like maybe this person yelling across the room mm. or maybe, you know, some kind of whatever. Yeah. You have to prepare yourself in a way that you are ready for the stage. And that's why, like, when I see people just kind of a lot of these, you know, opening acts or, yeah. or just like other less experienced people, and it's not even, it's not even about that, you know, because sometimes somebody is just like very new at it, but you can see how seriously they take it. Mm. And it's like, you have to take it that seriously, but that's not enough. You have to prepare yourself. And the right. more you, you practice and practice, like in a good way practice yeah. practice the right things the less nervous you will be become because you like you are you're confident in your skill as opposed to yeah i'll just go out there and like see what happens mm -hmm. that's a thing you can do that's a thing you can do like da vinci like he got so good at everything he he you know he says that sometimes he yeah. would just like do random things to see how can I get out of yeah. this on stage. It's because he has that skill. If once he has that mastery and he starts getting bored, yeah, he almost has to do that so that he wants to, you know, he wants to do live shows. But Be you smart. know what? Whatever he throws into, like, monkey wrench he throws into it, oh, he'll be able to get out of it yeah. because, like... He has that confidence, but also gives him this, this, this like jolt of adrenaline, like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, they've had shows before where people 
<laughs> Everybody's had shows before. It's like, did you right, do that on right, purpose? Right, you do that on purpose, right. You're not going to find out because yeah. it's our job. You know, you mess up lyrics, you forget this part or whatever. It's your job as a professional to get out of that situation so that yeah. the audience is not sure. Yeah. Right? And we know this, that the audience usually knows when you go like, ah, oh, shit. That's yeah. when they know. Otherwise, yeah. they have no idea. Right. Anyway, I want to talk about... Uh, Strategy. So okay. everything <laughs> that mm -hmm. you do on that stage, it it's kind of like you decided to do it. So um, the people that have 50, 50 other people on stage with them, like this is, you know, you can <laughs> see this a lot of like in hip hop shows. Yeah. I don't know. Is it Wu-Tang inspired pretty much? Uh, I would I would say that, but I'm not sure. Like, okay, I'm, yeah, but it's like... Could, I mean, because, you know... You had, see the, the, the main... MC Hammer doing a similar thing. <laughs> okay, you see, like, the, the main MC, right? Yeah. And then sometimes in the smaller shows, like, the person goes up, half the audience is now on stage. Right. Not doing anything, holding right. cups, you know, just like... Yeah. Not even, like, doing yeah. the person of, like, the, the, the backup vocal. Right, the right, right. Backup, this is on whatever, stage. just like... Okay, that's a decision. You know what I'm saying? So like when I talk about strategy, it's like, are you as an artist doing that because you can't handle the stage alone? Mm. Like you have to, mm. you have to be real with yourself, right? Just like people, you know, telling us like, you guys are holding microphones weird. No, we're just not cupping the mic. And the reason right. we're cupping the mic is to muffle yourself. And the reason to muffle yourself is so that when you mess up your lyrics, People don't notice because it's muffled. Or what a lot of Rapping MCs will say, lyrics. like yeah, a lot of MCs will say is like they create like a more directional, you know, what I'm saying kind of flow yeah. with it. When it's like yeah, you might you might think that, you know, what I'm saying, but it still muffles that, you know, what I'm saying it muffles it. Yeah. And, and plus, like obviously, we know about like rapping over vocals. It's like yeah, that's. But you know, I want to like <laughs> look at that as like those person those persons made those decisions. Right. Like when you think about how am I putting a show together? What am I going to do during the show? Like, okay, I have my songs, I have mm. the lyrics or whatever. It's a decision. Okay. When I go up, I'll bring 20 people with me. Mm. Right. Yeah. Why is that a security blanket? You know, right. I right. understand wanting more people and like kind of having the vibe. Yeah. But have some control over those people. You know what I'm saying? Do right. they know their jobs? Right. Is their literal job is like so that you don't feel alone on stage because you as a performer are not, not up to like having the charisma or the energy to entertain a crowd by yourself. Yeah. Like be real about that. And if that's what it is, work on that. Or give them something to do. Give them something you know what to saying? do. Like they could all be in unison walking, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like they could they could do something simple. And yeah. all of a sudden it turns into a prop. Like yeah. a dope prop. Right, it's right. just like, oh no, man. It could definitely work. It's definitely not like a it doesn't work. Right. It's just like if every, you know, it's just so many people doing it that it's just gotten yeah. so old and there's no real reason for it. Yeah. But like and how much started. of it is like you can't you like respect the stage. Are you at a point where you are able to provide a show for the people right. who, again, took the time out of their day, took the money out of their pocket to mm. come and see you? Do you have the respect for the audience? Right. To give them a show. Are you able to? Were you able to 15 years ago? Mm. And now you're just like recycling and Anyway, yeah. What do you have to say? No, about I was gonna say like the, uh, and responsibility. And yeah, because I was I was gonna say to add on to what it is you were talking about, like then you start to think your audience starts to think like, man, is this how hip hop shows go? Like, it is you know what I'm saying? You know how you get the quintessential kind of like response if you be like, yeah, I rap, and all of a sudden, almost everybody would be like, a word like you know me like yeah. you know what I mean? like yo, hold up. Yeah. Hold up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, so they think this, start thinking the same thing, and it becomes like a, this, this stigma, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you know, that's cool to an extent, but it's we have totally different types of, of rap categories, and you know what I'm saying? There's actual definition to the art, you know what I mean? Um, 
so I guess what we're saying about responsibility as far as um, rappers or, or not even rappers, but people on stage taking some sort of responsibility for the stage that they're on. Um, or respecting the stage. Or respecting the stage. Yeah. Um, my route that I would go is like, I would say in order to interact with your crowd, uh, learn where to position yourself. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. On the stage. That's, let's see, I have, that's a different Oh, we going, that's okay, the, all right, all right. I'll visual. save that. I'll so save that like info for later. Responsibility of the artist. Okay, all right, I got you. I got stage. you. Bring in your I, best. I have it all like. I, I see have, you. I see you. I see you. Y'all, he always got it. Yeah, he already did so many of the things I want to talk about because he did white net. And, hey. Okay. All right, so we're going to. Respect the stage. Respect the stage. So as far as respecting the stage, um, punctuality, you know what I'm saying? Uh, no, no. To that, no, 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 hold up. Punctu <laughs> punctuality to the stage, you to know what I'm saying? Stage. Yes, meaning, meaning like, I'm not talking about be arriving on time. I'm talking about whatever you're doing on that stage, like, it's got to be punctual, you know what I'm saying? So mm. next song, you know what I mean? Don't just be like, uh, let's see what we're going to do here. Oh, um, my God. Whereas, it's like the yeah. shows where everybody's like, this is so common. It I I can't believe it. It's like, and the next song is called Yo, blah, 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 blah. do the song. Like, oh, that song ain't... was called blah blah blah, and the next song is blah blah blah. You don't gotta announce everything that you doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that we understand that you running out of time and room. You know what I mean? To to bring whatever art you gotta bring. But it's like strategy. Have like, your shit together. Think about ahead of time. How can I connect these songs together? Yeah. How can I have the audience get lost in the experience? Mm. Not break it mm. up during every part. Okay, that was this, and now I'm going to do this. <laughs> la 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 la. Right. I'm done with that. <laughs> now I'm gonna do this, and it's on my new album. And then blah blah blah. Like those are. This is all great information to give to people. Yeah. But when it's like that, like. Yeah. Anyway. Saying a playlist. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, yeah. this is real life. So you have a chance to interact with your people. When she talked about con that connection. That heart to heart. Yeah, that, that, that connection. Like that is another way that I was, I would go straight to that as far as, um, as far as uh, respecting the stage. Yeah. Because first and foremost, usually stages, um, they, they are separated somehow from the crowd, which kind of put some sort of importance, you know what I'm saying, to it. So it's like, all right, cool. If if we're going to respect that, then we got to respect the people that we talking to as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, I think, a, a great example of how it is that you show folks that you respect the stage. You know what I mean? Um, so let's get... Yeah, got you. Let's get into, because you're already talking about it. So mm. the visual, and that's kind of like stage presence, stage okay. basics, um, you know what I'm saying? looking up maybe not like mm. you know some people he does this a lot he has his eyes closed um and that's another decision um and it doesn't work for everybody you know sometimes you have the singer songwriters that are like have their eyes closed the whole time uh i i feel like for some people it kind of like closes the window it's almost mm. like you're in your own world that the audience is watching so that's a decision based on what kind of material you're presenting. Yeah. But another, you know, another way it's like if you do do every song like that, that kind of creates almost like a wall between you and the audience. Yeah. You know, and then so it's like where you set yourself up on stage, which you just started talking mm -hmm. about, and just like that whole visual part of it and stage presence. Yeah. So basically, I would say for my creative side, right, I'm gonna be stage left. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm going to, then this is coming from my point of view. I'm, um, I'm to the left side of the stage and, um, back either back or forward, um, in that creative side. If I'm giving you just straight up, like this is about to be the most analytical nine 11 song, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be front and center. You know what I'm saying? Eyes open, connecting with every punch, every word, you know what I'm saying? Um, to my right, right? To my right is like, me, that's like me almost taken aback. Like if somebody else is doing their thing, um, then, you know, they're either stage left or, you know, in the, in the center. And I'm kind of off to the right, like just, you know, jamming, 
you know, waiting for something. Uh, even if I'm solo and I'm doing my thing again to the right, I'm just mm, vibing, right? I might do the hook over there and the hook might be soft or something like this. But then by the time I go in for the verse, front and center, right? Um, now, the back of that center is usually if, if I'm do, also if I'm doing something creative and I'm like, let's say I'm going... Um, I want you to prevent the things you can and will to let the microscopic ball, the hardy nunk, and such a silk, you call it soul, as gold, remember, travel path, it ain't read the time, honestly, call it you can't invest in that junk and junk and paint it to some robotic. Now, as I, that crescendo is happening, I'm coming to the front. Mm -hmm. And I might be coming like, mm, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I gotta, you know, I gotta bring the theatrics with it, right? And that's the, that's the beauty of a stage and with the lights and everything is all of your your movement is accented. And mm -hmm. you gotta, I, I try to pay attention to those types of things, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, when I'm having that uh, that motion, you know what I'm saying, be visualized, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so something that like, if you're kind of a, a, a beginner maybe, or like you just haven't looked into it, or you just practice on your own, and then, you know, your experience was just in real life, like look up just, some things that are just stage basics mm. like you know it, because if you do something like theater or whatever if you're like behind like when do i go on and you peek out the curtain you're like you learn very fast like if the audience can see you yeah i mean if you can see the audience the audience can see you right so it's like you never kind of look out to see who's like who's out there mm. because if you can see them they can see you like you know it's like it's a it's a stage basic kind of a thing so, um, and just saying things like you kind of approach, um, if it's a big crowd, you know, you, you, you perform to the person way back there. Yeah. If you're doing very small movements, no one, but the very first row will see yeah. you. Right. Nice. So those nice. are just like stage basics. Um, same with like, that's why people, you know, who don't usually wear maybe a lot of makeup will wear makeup on stage or maybe just around their eyes so that they can uh, communicate with their eyes and they, you know, people mm. further away can have that, that connection with them, mm. you know? So it's, um, it's, it's another thing that's kind of like the visual has taken up so much of the live performance yeah. that sometimes it's most of what there is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. like you saw what he just did, like another strategy, he can handle an entire stage by himself because it's so innate at this point like i can stand here i can yeah. move but you have to be able to rap while moving yeah. if you don't practice that yeah you it is yeah. difficult you will be uh, if you every day you practice your set standing and then you actually walk you will be so out of breath mm. because you're already nervous and all this you have to practice <laughs> so, many like so many stories so many stories so it's just like the vision, I don't want to get too far into the visual because, yeah, sure. I mean, obviously it's like some people love a show where it's just got costume and it's got the, the, the visuals and this and, and this and that. But um, to me, it's like that's all a, a very wonderful part of the show and a part to explore. But make sure you could hold the audience's attention just on your own. Mm. You know, and that's like, mm. he knows like one of my, like, uh, uh things that I, I came across with, like was Jerzy Grotowski or in Polish, Jerzy Grotowski, who, um, had something called the poor theater, um, in Poland. And it was basically, they were kind of fed up with all these operas and, uh, theaters becoming all about just lights and costumes. And, and they just trained all of their actors to be able to do anything at the drop of the of of the dime, so they all mm. trained in singing, they trained in juggling, they trained in gymnastics, they trained in you know just just you know speech and speaking and 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 all of these things, so that as an act, actor on stage, if you feel you're required to, you know, push one of your fellow actors mm -hmm. to where they fall over, you know they know how to fall, right? And they they know all kinds of like you know body mechanics and things like that that way you you are so able to do anything and i to me that is so important as as 
the artist and a part of respecting the stage is that I wouldn't want to go on stage if I couldn't handle the stage yeah, or if I couldn't handle a performing on my own. And at the beginning, you know, there were times where like my show was not that exciting. Mm. And it's like, I just feel like, yeah, like have that, have yeah. that ability. So it's like, if you want to have 50 people on stage with you, cool, but make sure that your artistry is at the level that if they weren't there, that show wouldn't be complete shit, that they're not what's making yeah. your performance what it is. Yo, one thing to add, the energy that will be on stage, like when we do our thing, it usually makes me feel like, oh shit, I could do anything right now. <laughs> so like toss it, like basically when we did the one show and you were talking about Da Vinci, right? Yeah, yeah. We did one show where like uh, this is a car wrap and we had never done the car wrap, this particular car wrap without the music. Yeah. And so we started to do it, and I was like, I just brought it yeah. up, like, hey, yo, let's just try something. Yeah, that show at the Iron Cow, some of y'all saw that. Yeah. Clip. Yeah. So, put me on the spot. So, yeah, you know what I mean? But that was but that was it. It was just like, we just talked about the push, and then it turns into something where it's like, yo, you just created a moment out of that. Yeah. And that's, that's, another, that's another thing is like, you know, going back to trust, you know what I mean? Is like being able to trust the person that you're on stage with. Being able to trust the moment, being able to trust the crowd that you built up. If you see that you built a, a, a moment, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I try to nurture that moment and, and respect uh, everything that is happening at that moment. Just to kind of be like, okay, if I'm going to mess up at any point in time, yeah. this would be the time. And I think I would get the support, but I, but I feel like I got that energy to do it. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Okay. These last ones we're just gonna run through real quick. Okay. One is the sound. So, sound. Um, like you said, you know who your sound engineer is. Mm -hmm. um, show up for your sound check. Make sure to show up. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, mic cupping we talked about. Yep. Um, this one I'm gonna combine these these last two together, which is the choice of material and sound. They kind of go together. Nice. Some things that you know your material choice, like. Some things that you, you know, recorded doesn't necessarily translate very well to the live stage unless you make some mm. adjustments or changes. Um, a lot of my stuff is that way um, because my style of singing, there's a lot of nuances, you know, and it's like I'm able to, you know, you're able to turn things up and down and kind of make sure my, my voice sits in a perfect place in between these, like, heavy beats, mm. very difficult to do on stage unless you're actually, you know, worked with that sound engineer and kind of prepared yourself in that space and just everything would have to be top notch. You know what I'm saying? So how do you approach picking material for live? Like, are there even things that you record that you can do live? Probably not, right? Um, uh, there's, no, there's some. There's there's, some? There are some, yeah. Because like you don't really punch in yourself when nah, you record, nah, right? Nah. So it's like, technically you can do it, but then it's live as a whole other yeah. situation. Yeah, there's there's some that are, that are just like, well, I'll put it to you like this. There's some that make sense, but only if they would come after a certain amount of like, you know, songs that I would already put out there. And if I were to do this particular song, it'd probably really mess up my my voice. You know what I'm saying? Like because it's a like a higher range, higher pitch, almost ah. like you know. Yeah, I've learned that in the past. Like I've been able to get through it, but like going through a tour like that, like mm -mm. yeah, like I'm my voice is done. Yeah, I yeah for me, it's it's really hard <laughs> for the mugs and pockets uh, shows where I switch from singing to rapping because yeah. it's a very different part of my voice. And so when we do the the rap stuff, it kind of, uh, it's my speaking voice that gets tired. So then I can sing all the higher stuff. But when I come back to like the speech mm. level, like that's already really tired, tired mm. out. So we have to really pay attention yeah. how we do our sets yeah. and like what song comes after what, like where, like maybe it, it, it makes more sense. But that's um, cool. one last thing yeah. um, I want to talk about. Um, audience like uh, audience from the point of view of the artist like who are your fans 
and why. Mm. Like, because that creates the vibe of who you're performing to. And it's like, what your music is, what you talk about in it, it just affects on who's going to listen to you. And there's just like, some people have audiences that these venues and these bartenders and people working there don't want to deal with. Yeah. You know? True. And it's a it's a problem for a lot of hip-hop shows because then other hip-hop acts have a hard time getting back into those venues. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, you know, we've heard some of these things happening, you know, after we did our shows maybe and, and then they brought in other acts, but it's just like, you know, the, the bartenders were just like, these people didn't tip. They right. had this attitude of like, right. they deserve free drinks or were just right. like just general assholes about everything and it's just like if that's your audience like think about that right like why are these the kinds of people right. that are attracted to my music <laughs> and like is that giving me a harder time to get booked right because like our audiences are pretty awesome people yeah oh yeah and they range you know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah yeah they, they range, range from like you know 80 to like you know however you know young you can yeah. be in a club but yeah, like those those are huge things, and I w I would say you know to add on top of that, um, the uh, level in which you can kind of control that situation is by way of again knowing your audience and then saying something like, hey, make sure you tip. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. bartenders, even if it's water, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's also like if people are having you know if people are having fun and feel good. Yeah. They act better. Oh, they, they act, act yeah. nicer. The mom Most mentality people, is different. Yeah. There's, you know, we're not talking about the, like, the extra egotistical people right, that right, would right. be an asshole no matter what. But like if the vibe is fun, everybody's having fun, they'll tip better. They'll, they'll, yeah. you know, it's, it's a vibe. So yep. it's like, as an artist, the type of show you have, the, and it's like, the, these are your decisions, the type mm -hmm. of show you put together, the way your show is flowing from so, song to song, the way you are interacting with the audience, the, this is your world, mm -hmm. right? This world that you're creating, like what kind of vibe is, is in the venue? What is, how is your audience like mm. responding? And it's like, if you see it's not the way you want to, like work on that. Yeah. What can might you be change? Try, might be time to change up some songs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like just to kind of final thoughts, like as an artist, why are you? Why are you there? Why are you performing? Is this mm. like, I feel for so many people, it's just like their therapy session. And it's like, okay, but know that that's what it is. Like, are you actually right. offering people something? So many people think that they're there to like, you know, to, to give people hope or to inspire or to do. Mm. It's like, are you, are you really though? Yeah. Or do you just like, are you taking some of your like most emotional things and just putting it out there? And you think that it's, unless you're like, you know, a committed artist, that that knows things about the stage and about the sound and about like what your job is as the performer yeah that might not be coming across <laughs> yeah I don't know. It, it, it no <laughs> i i think that one of the biggest um representations of like you knowing what's up is when you consistently you know go to a show or have a show and people aren't reacting or responding to your stuff yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's nobody there. So then it's like, okay, well, now it's like you, you definitely got to look at your songs. You definitely got to look at, you know, who it is that you are and what you're yeah. doing in order to get them there or keep them away, right? And I think first and foremost, like with everything that you do, um, there is like some sort of emotional content uh, attached. So just like Bruce Lee would be like, yo, if you're going to punch, punch. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to do the show, do the show. Like, if you if you were there to, like, chill out, you know what I'm saying? Hey, bring a pillow and a mattress on the stage and do the show laying down. Like, come on. Yeah. Like, Com that's going to be way more, right? That's going to be way more interesting. Commit to your decisions yeah, or, like, you know? to what you're trying to do. Yeah. And then let them know. Give them a little disclaimer. Like, I feel like I, have, I, feel like I make lazy music. So I'm just going to lay down for a second. 
and do a few songs and purposely cut your set short. And be like, that was my lazy set. You know what I mean? Boom. But let the promoter know you're going to do all that. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Come, with, come, come with your A game. Yeah. And on the flip side of that, if you are one of those artists who's like, I know I'm better than these people. I put in the work <laughs> and whatever. Well, also ask yourself, like, but are you dependable? Do you just sign up? Are, right. are you difficult to work with? Mm. And if those things are holding you back so that now you're behind the people who are less good than you, mm. it's like you got to work on whatever like makes you difficult to work with yeah yeah you know it's not just oh. the artist that's just like whatever you're also a human being that people have to interact with and you're if you're an asshole all the time yeah we don't want to work with you nah, but anyway yeah. this is it's like i said it's a living organism the way the reason we're so passionate about this is because people who are lazy about their job they're <laughs> fucking it up for us yeah because yeah. if we want to book this venue, if we want to do this show, if you want to invite these people and they have this idea, yep. oh, this is what a hip hop show is. We're going to come in right. and there's going to be people moping around a bunch yep. of like 10 people on stage, just, you know, <laughs> drinking and somebody just like talking mm -hmm. about bitches. Like they're like, mm, maybe yeah. not today. <laughs> I'd rather, you know, pet my cat. Right. So it's like that really affects us because people are no longer like aware yeah. That a show can be so yeah. thrilling <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that it could like... They're less invested in the beginning. Yeah, but it's like, these things can change your life. Yep. <laughs> they can like motivate you. Yep. They can they can start the avalanche of things that like mm. take you where you want to go in your life. People are just like so lethargic about things. Right. And it's like a really powerful show will shake you to your core. Yeah. And that's what I meant about like these these... People who turn 21 during COVID or just people who, mm. like, haven't experienced anything like that. And I'm talking, again, in a, in a neighborhood, small venue kind of thing. They're not even aware that this can come from people around them as yeah. opposed to just, like, the celebrity where you're already, like, when you're hearing those songs in the live setting, you heard this on the radio when you were, you know, 13 or whatever. It's mm. just, like... That's your nostalgia. Yeah, you have this like com you know commitment to it and this like love for it because wow. you're you're living th through it through your experiences. You know what I'm saying? But we're talking about like the small venue where like the artist can really like give you something. Yeah, give you something. Yeah, that like fulfills something <laughs> in yeah. you. You know? Yep. It's like so many artists are just. <laughs> I do this and I do this and yeah. I do this and I do this and it's like there's so many elements to being an artist but when you have that but then you have the technique and skill right. and you have the stage presence and you know the, the stage know-how and also like you know how to put a show together and just all of these things come together it's just like mm. and you don't get that until yeah. everything is in its perfect place yeah. you can get glimpses of that from artists, you can get right. that one song or that one part of the song when you're just like, oh, I felt something. Mm. But maybe they don't, they can't do it on a consistent basis because all those other things are, are not in play. You know, maybe yeah. their technique's not there to, to do a certain thing or maybe they're just, you know, guarded or maybe so many other things. But it's like, as, as, a, as the promoter or the sound person or the manager or, Shit, bartender, whoever <laughs> is like not doing their 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 job in this is it's Legos falling, not Legos, <laughs> dominoes falling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it affects the entire music yeah. scene. It yeah. it really does. Nobody's Which, gonna show up to show. Right, exactly. And then when you have no scene, you know what I'm saying? And you're like looking for who to blame, it's like usually the motherfucker that's asking the same question, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have just, you know, AI and you're just going to be looking at your screen forever. And then maybe you'll get the mm. of the projections. Mm. You'll have like the projection of yeah, Michael, they are, already Michael Jackson performing, it. you know, and it's just like, that's really cool. I'm really impressed. But yeah, when you lose that heart to heart from an artist, you lose the art. Mm. Oh, what? Cut. Anyway, we're done.
Thanks. This is this is another long one. Thanks for for hanging out. What We're up? gonna do a couple more soon. Um, one is going to be about like your top fives, top twenties, top one hundreds. What do you judge judge these artists by? So mm. all these things we just kind of mentioned is like, are you just you know, what are you judging them by? How do you know this 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 one person that's on top of everybody's list is the best out of everybody based right, on right. What? So we're gonna talk about that. <laughs> and we're gonna do another one on, uh, you know, women and hip hop and stuff. Boom. Like, what are they doing? What have they been doing there? Right, got to. Cause you know, they're there. <laughs> They've been there. <laughs> they won, anyway. Mm. Peace. Bye,